Hey everyone, I'm Bella, and I get crazy when I'm angry. How crazy exactly? Well, you have to stick around to find out. And please, like and subscribe to MSA. My parents were stinking rich. We lived in a huge mansion, had tons of servants, and every spring break we'd go on the most luxurious vacations. I was one of the most popular girls in school, and my life was literally perfect. But as I grew older, things started to change. Dad got busier at work and hardly came home. Mom suddenly had tons of commitments and parties to manage. The three of us didn't spend much time together. But I was busy with my school and social life too. And at least we'd still have the annual family vacation on my birthday. I was really looking forward to my 16th in Tokyo. But then my parents ruined it by dropping a nuclear bomb on me. Bella, your mom and I have decided to separate. Separate what? Honey, we're getting a divorce. What? Why on earth would you do that? Because I haven't been happy in a while, and neither has your dad. What do you mean you're not happy? You literally own every piece Prada makes before it even hits the runway. And daddy, what about all your yachts and sports cars? We have great lives. We're happy people! We're not happy with each other! And we don't want to continue like this forever! It's better if we part ways now! No way! I won't let you! That's not up to you, sweetie. This is what your dad and I want. I don't care what you want, okay? I want things to stay just as they are! Don't you see how badly this will affect me? How can you be so selfish? I threw my dinner plate to the ground and ran to my room. I heard dad call after me, but I just slammed my door shut. I thought my reaction was enough to talk my parents out of their separation. But the next week, Dad moved out and they filed for divorce. The next few months were the most difficult of my life. Thank God for my best friend Eloise, who was always there to console me and keep me sane. I kept thinking about how I could get my parents together. But then one day, Mom had told me that Dad had already met someone else. He wanted to introduce us to her over dinner at his place. I hated the idea, but Mom had already agreed, so I didn't really have a choice. That night, when we reached Dad's new place, my heart dropped when I noticed an elegant woman at the door next to him with a girl my age. Hi, you must be Bella. Your dad has told me so much about you. It's funny how he's never even mentioned you. Not once. Not ever. I mean, he did mention this morning that he had a girlfriend, which I thought was weird since he already has a wife. But other than that, nothing. <laughs> Bella has a weird sense of humor. You'll get used to it. Don't get used to anything. I don't see you being a part of dad's future too long. That's enough, Bella. It's okay, dad. It's a lot to get used to. I'm Keisha, by the way, and I've really been looking forward to meeting you. Come, I'll show you the house. Did this girl just call my dad, Dad? Before I could even speak, Keisha pulled me in. She showed me around, and I noticed how all the trophies in the house belonged to her. Even at the dinner table, Dad couldn't stop talking about how talented Keisha was, and it made me furious. Keisha is not just great at studies, but she's an amazing piano player. Oh, and you should hear her sing. It's like a symphony to the ears. Oh, Dad, you sound really needy calling him dad. And literally everyone these days is a singer. What's so special about that? I'm a great gymnast and can do the perfect cartwheel. And with that, I jumped from the chair and did a cartwheel. But I lost my balance and ended up crashing into the dining table. My parents rushed to my rescue and I was embarrassed. But then I noticed Keisha <laughs> giggling in a corner and it made my blood boil. I wanted to give her a piece of my mind, but I'd hurt my hand. So mom excused herself and we left for home. And the next day, things took a turn for the worse when I walked into my school and saw Keisha in the parking lot. Are you stalking me? No, no. Dad just got me enrolled in your school. By the way, how's your arm? You crashed pretty bad last night. I was also a gymnast in my previous school, so if you're really interested in perfecting a cartwheel, I can help you. I don't need your help. Also, he's not your dad. And you can fool everyone with your sweet smile, but I won't fall for your tricks. You're evil, and soon everyone will know that. I walked off before she could even reply, and I was so annoyed because every Everyone seemed to be instantly in love with her. Girls couldn't get enough of her style, and boys were tripping over each other to talk to her. She's so fake. Look at her with her fake smile and fake bag and fake attitude. I just want to knock her teeth in. I understand why it's bothering you having her around, but I think you're giving her way more attention than she deserves. You're far prettier and smarter than her. Eloise was my BFF, and she was right. I didn't want to waste my energy on Keisha, so I decided to take the high road and move on. But then, I was passing through the girls' locker room when I saw Keisha giggling with some girls. It would be easier for everyone if she could at least play nice. I mean, it's not my fault if her mom and dad didn't want to live together, right? Totally. She's being a weirdo, but you're so sweet. <laughs> and girl, I need your hairdresser's number. Keisha laughed again, and that's when I decided that I was going to show Keisha her place. The next morning, as we 
all sat down for the biology class, I flashed Keisha the brightest smile. She looked a bit confused until she opened her bag and found a bunch of dead cockroaches inside. Keisha jumped up in horror before banging into the guy next to her. Both of them fell on a shelf and all the beakers came tumbling down. And I couldn't stop giggling. Another time after gym class, I swapped Keisha shampoo with blue dye, and she got out looking like a smurf. Everyone rushed to her in concern, while I stood in a corner laughing my butt off. Suddenly, Eloise pulled me to the side. You did this, didn't you? Of course. Keisha looked like someone pulled her out of a flask. Genius move, right? No, it's called bullying. I get that you're annoyed with your dad, but Keisha doesn't deserve this. Stop being a jerk. I'm not being a jerk. I'm just showing Keisha that she can't mess with me. I just want her and her dumb mom to leave our lives so my parents and I can be a family again. That's not gonna happen, Bella. Just face the truth. Their marriage is over. Oh, shut up. My parents aren't a lost cause like your parents. Instead of telling me to face the truth, when are you planning to tell your mom that you caught your dad cheating on her months ago? The minute those words Eloise had told me in confidence left my lips, I felt regret. And even more so, when I noticed a bunch of girls behind us had overheard the conversation. Eloise looked shocked. Her eyes tearing up. Listen, I didn't... Don't even bother, you witch! Eloise just walked away before I could apologize. I was feeling really bummed out that evening, so I thought I'd try to catch Dad at his office and spend some time with him. But as I was about to enter his room, I saw stupid Hillary inside, pacing back and forth and talking to someone in a low, urgent tone. As I tried leaning in closer to make out what she was hearing, I suddenly lost my balance and fell right in. Hillary turned around in shock and cut the call immediately. Hey, sweetie. Are you okay? Let me help you up. Ew, no, don't touch me. Where's my dad? I'm here to see him, alone. He's in a meeting. He should be done soon. I was just leaving. As she reached for her handbag on the table, she accidentally knocked it over, and thick wads of cash fell out. She looked panicked as she shoved them back in and quickly left. What was going on with her? Later, as I hung out with Dad, I couldn't help voicing my suspicions. Does Hillary know the combination to your safe, Dad? Does she have access to your accounts? Why are you asking me these strange questions? Don't you feel worried that she might be with you for money? I mean, I tried Googling her, and I couldn't find anything about her or what she does. What if she's a con artist of some kind? She isn't, and she loves me, and I love her. She makes me really happy, Bella. The words cut through my heart like a knife. I wasn't exactly in the best headspace when I walked into class the next day and found Eloise sitting next to Keisha. It physically hurt. I walked up to them and slammed my books on the table. So what? Now you're just going to try to make me jealous by hanging out with this moron? I thought you hated her. No, Bella, you hate her. The only person I hate right now is you. I'm sure you don't mean that. Bella, why don't you join us at recess and I'm sure you guys can sort things out. Stop acting like you're some freaking angel. You're so fake. Just forget it, Keisha. Talking sense into Bella is like asking a donkey to solve a complicated math equation. Was that an attempt at humor? Because it pretty much sucked. Still sucks less than your stupid face. I'll show you, stupid. I pushed Eloise and she landed on her butt as Keisha rushed to help her. Just then, the teacher walked in, and everyone around her told her that I'd pushed Eloise, and I landed in detention. It wasn't even the first time, because after that, I was often being rude to my classmates and teachers, and then I also failed a few tests. Mom and Dad tried to get me into therapy to help me cope with our family situation, but after several failed sessions, they gave up. If they thought I was just gonna forgive them and move on, they had it all wrong. And at school, the more I saw Eloise and Keisha hanging out together, the more determined I felt to get even with Keisha, and I found an opportunity when Dad invited me for Keisha's 17th birthday party, to which half the school was invited. Now all I needed was to find a way to humiliate Keisha, and I'd finally have my revenge. I was trying to figure out what to do, when suddenly I noticed Hillary sneaking through the back door holding a thick envelope. I followed her outside, only to find her talking to a big guy wearing a hoodie, and suddenly I noticed the gun he was holding. I quickly whipped out my phone as I inched closer to listen, my heart pounding. I I told you not to come home. You weren't answering your phone. I had to make sure you guys were okay. We're fine. You're here for the money, right? There. Thanks. And just so you know, you can't hide the truth forever, Laura. I don't have a choice. No one can find out my real identity. 
So do me a favor, take this money and just zip your mouth. The guy nodded and left. Just as she turned around, Hillary saw me and nearly screamed in shock. I knew it. I knew there was something shady about you and your daughter. What else are you hiding besides your real name? Bella, it's not what it looks like. Of course it's not. You know what? Maybe you'll confess in front of the whole crowd. I've recorded everything. And now my dad will know what big imposters you and Keisha are. Hillary tried to stop me, but I ran inside and went straight to the huge TV screen placed in the middle of the room. I stopped the music and plugged in my phone. Everyone fell silent as the video played, and Keisha looked like she'd seen a ghost. Just then, Dad jumped in, unplugged my phone, and threw it on the floor. Dad, why'd you do that? Because I had enough of your nonsense, Bella. My nonsense? These two lied to you. Her name's not Hillary, it's Laura. And she's paying someone your hard-earned money to keep some big secret. Aren't you even curious? No, because I know the truth. And the money you're talking about is Hillary's, not mine. And that's when Dad told me the whole truth. Apparently, Laura, or Hillary, was married to some mafia guy, and Keisha was their daughter. I didn't want to bring up my child with a criminal. So one day, when Keisha was four, I stole money from my ex-husband's vault, grabbed Keisha, and just ran away. I changed my name, made a few investments, and things started picking up, but I was always afraid of being found out by Keisha's dad. And lately, I've been feeling more paranoid. The man you saw is an ex-FBI agent I hired to protect me and Keisha. But you told me my dad was a surgeon, that he died before I was born. Baby, I said that to protect you. By lying to me all these years? And this is how I find out thanks to you, Bella. You ruined my party and you ruined my family. This must be the best day of your life. Keisha, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. You know what? I tried to be nice because I could see you were having a hard time dealing with your parents' divorce. But now I know that you're just a vengeful, horrible person, and I can't stand your face. I felt so ashamed as Keisha cried and then ran to her room. I wanted to apologize, but Dad called the driver and sent me home. I couldn't sleep a whole night, and I kept thinking about how horribly selfish I'd been. I was so blinded by my hatred for Keisha that I crossed all lines. I just wanted to apologize and make up for my behavior. But the next morning, Mom told me that Keisha and Hillary were leaving for London. For good. I couldn't let that happen. So I rushed to Keisha's place and ran up to her room as she was zipping up her last suitcase. What are you doing here? I don't want you to leave. Listen, Keisha, I was stupid and jealous, and I thought you were stealing everything from me. My dad, my best friend, my life. You were right. I've just had a lot of trouble accepting my parents' divorce. But I know Hillary makes my dad really happy, in a way that I haven't seen him happy around Mom in years. You know, all my Life, I felt really alone because mom was always moving from place to place and I never had siblings or friends. I really did get excited thinking I'd finally settle down and have a family. I wasn't trying to steal anything from you. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say except that I want to make this work because this is the version of family I have now. It includes you and your mom and I don't want to keep fighting this. You really mean it? I do. And then we hugged and it felt nice. Great. Now that we have that sorted, I have to go and apologize to someone else too. You mean me? I turned around and saw Eloise walk in. Eloise, I was such a horrible friend. You tried to show me the right way, but I ended up hurting you. Please forgive me. I swear I'll be a better person. I know you doofus. Now stop crying. You look hideous. I know. Let me tell my mom we're not going to London, and then we can grab some coffee. Feels like a good place to start.